Twilight Sparkle, Ace Attorney, The Royal Turnabout, by Anime GX43. Day 1, Twilight Sparkle, Ace Attorney. October 9th, 3.25 p.m. Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Twilight was so proud of herself for taking the chance to defend Rarity. She believed that between her seat of power as a princess, her high intelligence, and the magic of friendship would guarantee her friend's freedom. Sadly, she had one discouraging thought in her head. Why is Spike and Rarity looking at me like that? Twilight thought nervously. While Twilight was confident, Spike and Rarity questioned whether or not it was a good idea. Twilight, sweetie, I know you want to help, but maybe you should leave this to an actual lawyer. I'm sure the legal system works a little differently from magic. I know it won't be easy, but I read lots of law books back at Ponyville. In fact, I just finished one about talking like a lawyer. With my knowledge of equestrian law and my cords of steel, I know I'll be able to get you acquitted. Twilight? After you first read that book, you couldn't speak for a week, Spike said. You're not helping me convince Rarity, Spike, Twilight thought to herself with annoyance. Rarity, who would you trust more? Me, or some cheap lawyer who probably won't care if you're banished or not? Well... The former Twilight, Rarity answered. Then please, let me help you. I promise I'll do everything in my power to get you out of here and bring you back home. Rarity was ready to give up hope and accept her unfortunate fate. But after seeing Twilight's determination, she felt a new sense of hope. Rarity knew how smart Twilight was and wanted to at least give her a chance. After all, she had nothing left to lose and everything to gain. Like always, she trusted Twilight completely. Take this, darling, Rarity said, as she slid an envelope to Twilight. This is my letter of request. After I sign this, you just need to bring this to the police or the princess, and you should have power of attorney. I won't let you down, Rarity. I can't let you down, Twilight answered. To make it official, Twilight used her magic to summon a quill and a bottle of ink and called a couple of the guards to act as witnesses to make the signing official. As soon as Rarity finished writing her name on the document, Twilight officially became Rarity's attorney. Are you sure you're up to this, Twilight? Rarity asked. Please, I've saved a question like four times now. This'll be a snap. Well... Good luck, Twilight. I have faith in you. Right as Twilight and Spike prepared to leave, a final thought came to Twilight's head. Wait! I have one more question, Rarity. An important one. Of course, darling. What is it? Well, from what I've heard, the reason you're in jail at all is because the police found you with Prince Bluba at the crime scene. As for my question... What were you doing there in the first place? Rarity became stunned when Twilight asked her question. The last time she was asked a question, it took her a moment to come with an answer. But after being asked about why she was in Blue Blood's room, she couldn't come up with an answer at all. After thinking carefully, Rarity found a way around the question. Oh, would you look at that! Visitor hours are over! Can't keep the guards and my cellmate waiting! See you at the trial tomorrow, Twilight! Later, Spike! Bye! Rarity, wait! Twilight said, only for Rarity to run off from the glass window to get sent back to her cell. Dang it, Rarity! This isn't going to help your case at all! I don't know what you're hiding, but I still trust you enough to know you didn't try to hurt any pony. Despite Rarity's refusal to share information, Twilight still trusted Rarity and believed she didn't try to kill Blue Blood. After the anticlimactic visit, Twilight and Spike went back to see Commissioner Cestus, since he was the reason they could visit at all. He waited patiently for Twilight and Spike to finish their meeting, and was happy to see they were finished. Finally! 
Now can we get back to the station now? Cestus asked. Let me think. I guess it's an acting as a defense. I need to find some evidence. Twilight thought to herself. Commissioner, I actually have another favor. I need you to take me to the scene of the crime. To the crime scene? Your Highness, I told you already that you can't get involved in this case. Cestus reminded. Princess Celestia herself. It's alright. As of right now, I am acting as Rarity's defense attorney. You what? The commissioner was beyond surprised by what he was told. He brought Twilight and Spike in just so they could see their friend, not to give Twilight a chance to practice law. I but but you you can't do this! I was given orders directly from Princess Celestia and the High Council to not let you get involved in this. Cestus explained. I can't do anything as a princess, but since I'm a lawyer now, that changes everything. But no, that changes nothing! Cestus claimed, as he was almost speechless by Twilight's announcement. I was told that royalty is not to be involved in this case to maintain neutrality. Ugh, I don't have time for this. I have less than a day to get a case ready for Rarity tomorrow. Twilight thought to herself. Fine then, I'll just have to talk to Princess Celestia and let her know that Rarity now has a defense. Now look here, pal. You've been told not to get involved with this case for a reason. Just because you're a fat cat, it don't mean you can find loopholes in the Queen of Fat Cat Orders. Twilight was mortified by what Cestus said to her. Not long before, he was trying to stay on her good side, but then he did a 180 and not only insulted Twilight, but Princess Celestia herself. Did... did you just call me fat? Twilight asked with great anger. Well, you certainly are rather large for a mare, now aren't you? Cestus answered. Maybe it's just because you're the smallest stallion I've ever met. I may be small, but I'm the strongest stallion you'll ever meet. Fine then. The smallest cop versus the element of magic herself. Bring it, pal! Giving very little time for any pony in the room to react to the situation, Twilight and Cestus began fighting each other. The guards didn't even know what they saw. To them, it seems like a dusty cloud appeared out of nowhere, covering up much of the room. Fortunately, after hearing numerous curses and death threats between Twilight and Cestus, two guards managed to break the fight and kept the two away from each other. Spike stayed in front of Twilight to make sure she didn't try to get back into the fight. It's alright, boss, the guard said. We hate her too. After that, the guards brought Cestus out of the room as quickly as possible. They knew things would have gone violent again if they were to stay any longer. They hate me? How the heck can they hate me? I'm their princess! Twilight thought to herself. Twilight, we should probably go and see Princess Celestia, Spike said. Agreeing that seeing Celestia would be the best decision, particularly because of how little the police were helping. Twilight waiting for Cestus to leave the room, she could take the same exit and leave without getting into another fight. While she would have liked to give him another piece of her mind, Twilight needed to make it clear to Celestia that she was going to defend Rarity at court. October 9th, 4.15pm, Canterlot Castle, Throne Room. Twilight and Spike returned to the castle to speak to Celestia for a second time, but after Twilight's little fight with Cestus, she felt less enthusiastic than she was planning to be. She was thinking more about the fight more than the upcoming trial. Can you believe that jerk? Who does he think he is? Twilight asked. I think he's the chief of police, Spike answered. That was a rhetorical question, Spike. I'll give him credit though. For such a small pony, he could throw a punch. Twilight then realized that she had a sore bump on her head, which she would have gotten from her little fight. As she gently rubbed her sore spot, 
she saw an ice pack magically placed on the lump. Thanks, Princess Celestia, Twilight said. As soon as she said Celestia's name, Twilight jumped and screamed at Celestia's sudden appearance. She didn't even realize Celestia wasn't in the room when she entered. How can a pony three times my size be able to sneak up on me like that? Twilight asked herself. You went to see your friend and got into a fight with Star Cestus. Celestia asked as she overheard Twilight and Spike talking. I'm surprised you're not in a jail cell with your friend. Has they put Twilight in a jail cell? Spike said. She's your most important student and one of the Equestria's princesses. Actually, that's exactly why I figured he would throw her in jail. Twilight and Spike didn't understand what Celestia meant. But Twilight felt it wasn't important and decided to talk about what she thought it was. Princess Celestia, after thinking it over and discussing it with Rarity, we decided that I will be acting as her defense tomorrow. Twice in one day, Twilight went straight to the point and showed eagerness to help Rarity, which, once again, left Celestia speechless. Unlike the first time though, Celestia didn't know how to react to Twilight's choice. Twilight Sparkle. I know you want to free Rarity, but this time you're being way too hasty. Celestia said. I've already made a list of potential defense attorneys and I'm going to summon one right now. There is no point, Princess. I've already signed the document needed to legally make me Rarity's defense. Whether you like it or not, I'm handling Rarity's case tomorrow. Celestia became downright shocked by what Twilight said. As she thought about what her student said, she stared down and looked at her student, making Twilight, and even Spike, feel intimidated. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all, Spike said to Twilight. Yeah, this doesn't sound like a good idea in hindsight, Twilight started to think. While Celestia looked intimidated and even somewhat angry, after thinking about it in her head, she began to smile at Twilight with a more confident look. In return, Twilight stopped fearing her teacher. I should have expected this. I guess I've forgotten how hard the magic of friendship will drive you. Celestia admitted. Then, using her magic, she conjured up a bronze badge which had the symbols of the elements of harmony surrounding it, with the element of magic being in the center, and gave it to Twilight Sparkle. What's this? Twilight asked. That, my little pony, is a defense attorney's badge. With it, I acknowledge you as a pony's defense, and with it, you'll be able to investigate and defend Rarity's case. Well, I still question your plans. It seems you are the only one with the technicality to help your friend, Twilight. And I believe that you're Rarity's best chance for getting her freedom. Hearing that Princess Celestia had confidence in her made Twilight feel less and less worried about her choice of defending Rarity. Feeling sure of herself, Twilight accepted the badge with pride. Oh, thank you, Princess! I promise I'll put this to good use, Twilight said with joy. Remember, the trial starts tomorrow. You won't be able to do just waltz in and hope for the best. You should try to find some evidence to work with. Celestia suggested. Where can we find evidence on such short notice? Spike asked. After what happened at the detention center, I'm sure Cessus won't want to be of help, Twilight thought with grief. Luckily, another idea came to mind. I guess the best plan of action is to check out the crime scene, the Gilded Horseshoe. Good luck, Twilight. I know you can do it. Celestia said. October 9th, 5 o'clock p.m. The Gilded Horseshoe, 5th floor, Prince Blue Blood's room. After arriving at the hotel, Twilight is able to use her newly acquired attorney's badge to not only get into the hotel, but to get pointed toward the crime scene. Wow, this really is a nice room, Twilight admitted. It would probably be nicer without the police tape, Spike said. Yeah, probably. As Spike said, the hotel room was quite messy due to the recent crime. Police tape was placed around the room's front door. But Twilight and Spike got around it and entered the room anyway. Right off the bat, the two saw tape on the floor, making a stallion shaped figure. 
This must be where Bluebud was when he got attacked, Twilight said. I wonder how it happened. Maybe the murder weapon is still around, Spike said. No, if there was a weapon, the police would probably have it. Defending Rarity would definitely be hard if we don't know if Bluebud got stabbed, smacked, or whatever. Maybe it was a storm cloud? A storm cloud? Really, Spike? If that's the case, shouldn't it be Rainbow Dash on trial? Twilight thought, as she gave Spike an annoyed look. In return, Spike gave her an embarrassed shrug. In any case, let's see if there's any other clues around. Unfortunately for Twilight and Spike, there wasn't anything overly useful in the room, despite the fact that it's a murder scene inside a luxurious hotel room. This would have been because the police had already taken what they believed to have been important evidence, leaving Twilight without anything. After looking about, though, Spike found something of interest. A key with a metal tag on it, which Spike found on the table. Found the hotel key, Spike said. Spike, how is that important? Twilight said as she paused. Actually, that could be really important if it's the only way in and out of the crime scene. The police probably left it because it belongs to the hotel. Really? I was honestly just looking for anything that stuck out. After taking the key from Spike, the two continued to search the room. They were both surprised to see that the room wasn't in shambles. Sadly, this meant that there was nothing that stuck out. Nothing except one little thing. A broken window at the end of the room. Good thing they couldn't take away an entire window, Spike said. I'd actually like to see Commissioner Cestis try to pull it out. <laughs> Twilight thought as she laughed to herself. I wonder how this happened. Maybe the killer broke in through the window and attacked Blue Blood. Spike suggested. Isn't this on the fifth floor? After taking a close look outside, Twilight and Spike deemed that it would be impossible for any pony to break in through the window, so how the glass broke from the outside and shatter on the inside was a mystery. As Twilight found that bit of information important, she considered the broken glass as evidence. Well, Spike, I'm afraid this might be all we can find in the room. Everything else is probably taken by the police, Twilight said, not being satisfied with the progress. Let's take a quick look outside and get ready for tomorrow. That's not a bad idea. Let's just leave the hotel and- Nonsense! It'll be faster if we just fly out, Twilight said as she opened the window up. Um, Twilight? Have you gotten used to your new wings yet? Spike asked. It's just a five-story building. Watch as I jump and gently glide towards the... While she wasn't paying attention, Twilight fell out of the window, failed to open up her newly gained wings, and... The young alicorn fell five stories and was lucky enough to land on a large bush, but the fall didn't leave her with a sore back. She was grateful that no one but Spike saw her. As she bared the pain and looked up, she took a closer look at the hotel. One, two, three, four, five, six floors? Bluebud's room wasn't on the top floor? I heard his standards were extremely high. You'd think he would go for the penthouse, Twilight thought. Twilight! Spike shouted from the hotel room. Are you alright? Did you find anything weird down in there? While Twilight didn't feel very good after her clash landing, she didn't want to break her back for nothing, so she looked around for evidence. She looked around the bushes to see if there was anything worth taking to court, hoping she would find something. Sure enough, she found something suspicious. A simple white cap. She didn't know why it was suspicious, but she was thinking more about her sore back than anything else. Found something, Spike, Twilight answered. Great. What do we do now? Spike asked from the fifth floor. This is probably all we're going to find. Let's head back to the castle and get ready for tomorrow. I'd like to catch up on some reading to get ready. Alrighty then, 
I'd like to get something to eat anyway. Okay. Good, Twilight thought. I found some stuff to work with, and I'm sure the juicy stuff will be brought up in court tomorrow. From this point on, the real battle for Rarity's freedom begins. All that's left now is to wait for Spike to pull me off this bush. As she lied and waited for her assistant, Twilight took a deep breath to calm herself down. The next was going to be very stressful, and she wasn't looking forward to it. Spike? Are you here yet? To be continued.